and I'm going to relight the scene here. And you can also defocus the sky with this, which is pretty cool. Now I'm shooting everything F16. So pretty much everything is going to be sharp. So I'm not going to really go crazy with this defocus. Maybe I'll do like three or something like that. Even that, I think, I don't even know if I'm going to defocus it at all because everything is so sharp here, sharp there. Um, it's going to leave it as it is. I think I can get away with that and then change the opacity of it. Uh, maybe I'll do it two there. Okay, and then they have the temperature you can mess around with making it more warmer or you can make it like uh, bluish, whatever you want to do. And then you can change the exposure of the sky. You could bring it down. In my case, I might brighten it up a little bit. Okay, so that looks pretty cool, but in my eyes, it still looks a little bit like, oh, he added a sky. So how, how can I adjust this to blend it in a little bit better? That's why I put it on a separate layer. So if I go back to my layers, what I can do is I can turn down either the adjustment amount or the opacity. And if I just pull it back a bit, it's going to look believable. It's a pretty intense shot, so I want to kind of leave that intensity there. But if I just kind of step it back a bit, maybe at around 70%, I feel like that's more believable to me than how it was before. So I'm wondering if, oh yeah, I don't really show it. So before is like that, right? And I'm just going to pull it back just a bit at around the 70% mark right there. And I think that makes it look a little bit more believable. So the key to adding skies in Luminar is to duplicate the first layer then add your skies in after that. Now I can add another adjustment layer and you can add um, different things that they have here, right? They have skin, adjusting the skin. Now because it's AI, basically for it to adjust the skin, it's going to have to be a portrait of somebody. And because that subject is very small in the photo, it's not picking up that there's a person there. So that's why it doesn't do the skin enhancer or what it does to the skin. It's going to have to do the entire image and it might not work. And so maybe that's why they don't have it. So it's not going to adjust the skin when this subject is so small. So that's not really going to work, but that's that feature for that. And then they have some pro features here, dodge and burn, um, split toning it can do, and enhancing the color, dodging and burning, adjustable gradient if you want to do that. I like to kind of do that stuff in um, Lightroom. So I kind of leave that for Lightroom, but this is also kind of a um, standalone editor too. And it's it's under a hundred dollars. So it's, you know, if you want to just use this and not even get into Photoshop, it will do some skin smoothing, but to me it's not as powerful as Photoshop and to do a really good job with the skin, you're going to have to get into Photoshop. 
So I like the sky here. I mean, I see some little things here where I'd like to make this darker and this darker so this subject will stick out. And I see of kind of a discoloration of of shadow and highlight on the skin. I'd love to smooth that out, but I think I'm going to have to really go into Photoshop to do that. And these programs aren't that powerful to be able to really do that type of adjustment. So I think I'm pretty good here and um, I'm not going to do any other adjustments on that. I can go ahead and delete this layer because I'm only using these two layers right here. I'm using the sky. So that's before, that's with the sky. That's pretty fast and easy. Then you can go ahead and hit apply button up here and that uh, allows you to save it, process this image and bring it back into Lightroom. And then in Lightroom, I can do some adjustments and then I'll probably bring it into Photoshop to kind of finish it off. But let's let it process here and then go right into Lightroom again and see what we can do. As you can see, it brought it into Lightroom. Here's my before. Here's my after. That's pretty cool with one click. <laughs> so again, um, I want to make sure that my subject sticks out a bit more. So I'm going to add a gradient here. So here's my gradient and I'm going to go under exposure and I'm going to underexpose it and make it darker so your eye can focus here. Because right now, if you look at this small little thumbnail, your eye doesn't go to your subject. The eye goes right here. So you're losing a bit of impact here because your eye's going boink. And so you got to really reduce that down. So that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to take my gradient and I'm going to pull this across and darken this, the ground a bit more. And this side here, if I use the gradient here, it's going to hit that sky too. So I could do it like that. And what I can do is try to open her up a bit. And how I like, I have a lot of control creating an oval. And you might be thinking, uh, that's not working out. Make sure that you hit the invert button here. The feathers all the way up and you can now control this and bring the exposure a little bit brighter. So you can begin to shift that. You don't want to go too much because then look at you get a halo around the image. So you just want to do it a little bit so you don't see that halo. You can spread this out a bit more too, so that is kind of a gradual brightness. And I like to take a look at it and see if there's any kind of halo that's really obvious. And that, that looks actually pretty good. And if you can see the before and after, see that's right out of camera, you're gonna see a big difference in the shifting of your eyes. To the subject by just kind of what I call um, rezoning or rebalancing. So this is like rebalancing the photo. So you're creating impact by forcing somebody to look at the main subject by making it the brightest. And you can see a before and after where you're like relighting the entire scene and you're just balancing it so you can just see that subject right away. I, I think I'll go into Photoshop and drop this down a bit because I want to really work on this um, shadow area here. Okay, so now I'm going to take this, I like this, and I'm going to bring this into Photoshop 